Europe is a place of pilgrimage. And we don't think of it that way, but we should. You have more tourists in Europe than you have citizens. And the question is, well, why is that? And the answer is very straightforward. It's beauty, period, the end. And especially for someone from New York but in, or from North America, but from any more modern place, coming to Europe is nourishing in an extraordinarily deep way to see these old communities and these beautiful buildings. It's necessary. It's not, it's not optional. That's why people spend so much money doing it. That's why they work to be able to do it. They work at things they don't want to do to be able to come and spend a week in Paris or a week in Milan or a week in Helen. So you, you have enjoyed your time here. It's beautiful. The old town is Thank so you. beautiful. It's crazily beautiful. And I, I'm, I'm, it's concerning. The more modern Europe becomes, the more it looks generic. And as an economic decision, that's, it's so foolish. You have this immense heritage of the stunning beauty, and it's, it's almost incalculably financially worthwhile. It's like, capitalize on that. That's what you have to offer the world, and it's something. It's something. It's not power and dominion and oppression and it, the oppressive imperial patriarchy. That's not it at all. It's, at minimum, it's beauty. And beauty, well, what, that's Dostoevsky's line, beauty will save the world. Absolutely. And my yeah. final question is, we have really made lots of work to make our country beautiful, mm -hmm. our old town beautiful, but we are afraid of Russia. Yes. They may come and reconquer again. Yeah. And I have a question which you may or may not answer, because you don't definitely have the information available. But as a clinical psychologist, what mm -hmm. do you think? Is Mr. Putin crazy? No. Definitely not. No, no, you never want to underestimate the people that you're at war with. That's a big mistake. There, and the, I see no evidence at all for clinical psychopathology on Putin's side. And he's, Russians are complicated, and he's complicated. He is by no means the worst leader that Russia's had in the last hundred years. Not by any stretch of the imagination. I'm not standing up for Putin, but I'm not going to casually demonize him. You can't take your simplistic understanding of Adolf Hitler or Joseph Stalin, which is incomplete, and then say, well, that's Putin. It's like, look, we're in trouble here. Wars tend to spread, and everyone thought when the First World War started, yeah, it'd be a few months. And then when it wasn't, they thought, well, we'll win easily. It's like, no, that isn't what's going to happen. And the people thought the same thing in World War II. And they thought the same thing in Afghanistan. And so this is a localized Ukraine-Russia conflict. Well, first of all, no, it's not. It's a war by proxy of Russia against the entire West, obviously. Now, all the world isn't on board with that, but much of the world is, but not all of it. And so, you know, <laughs> you might say when your sleeve gets caught in an industrial machine, and only an inch of your sleeve is in, you think, well, I've still got my whole arm. It's like, yeah, for the next 10 minutes. But don't be thinking that that's how it's going to be in half an hour. And it'll be an absolute bloody miracle if this doesn't engulf us all. And there's a high probability of that. With all of that, all that that entails, what would it mean for the Russians to lose? Like, let's say that's what the West wants. We want Russia to lose. Okay, well, what do you mean by that, lose, exactly? Do you want the Russians to feel that they're going to lose? They have atom bombs. What is going to happen to a country that's already paranoid and misguided if they also think they're going to lose? You think they're just going to lose? And we're not going to lose along with them? That's not going to happen. And so we're playing with fire. On, and I think I'm, I've written an article uh, called The Civil War in the West because I think what's happening in Russia and Ukraine is a, a civil war in the West. It's just, that's just where it started. Russia's the West. And it's not just about post-Soviet territorial expansion. It's not just about oil and gas. It's definitely about those things. But it's about way more. It's about the stunning blindness and stupidity of Europe on the energy front. Who didn't know this was going to happen? Do you, who
Who's so blind that they believed that making Europe dependent on Russian oil and gas for environmental reasons wasn't going to produce this? And well, we didn't know. Well, if you were a statesman and you didn't know that, you are so incompetent that it defies comprehension because that's so self-evident. And so now we're in that situation. Second question about responsibility and the long perspectives. Can yeah, and the practical perspective yes. too, you know. it's. Well, you have these idiot environmental utopian ideas. Well, what are you willing to sacrifice to that? Well, how about the energy stability of Europe? Okay, great. Well, now here we are. So, you know, we're dreaming of a planet where there aren't people to be a cancerous growth. Well, enough nuclear exchange and we might just get that. So, we're playing with fire. Let's keep and, our fingers crossed that we can still survive. Yeah, for well, the next 100, 500 years of civilization. One year. Even one year. Would be yeah, possible. even one year. There's going to be mass starvation in the fall. There's going to be mass migration into Europe again. Obviously, like the writing is on the wall, the UN is already projecting 150 million people in the fall will face what do they call that? Food insecurity, by which they mean skyrocketing prices and famine, food insecurity. Famine. So, yeah, it's really well, not good.